This patient with poor oral hygiene complaints of submandibular pain and swelling three days after dental procedures. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is Ludwig's angina. Ludwig's angina is a rapidly progressive bacterial infection of the submandibular, sublingual, and submental spaces beneath the tongue, resulting in severe cellulitis of the neck and floor of the mouth. Early recognition is critical due to the high risk of airway obstruction. Symptoms of Ludwig's angina include tongue elevation, dysphagia, drooling, trismus, jaw locking, and muffled speech. Immediate hospitalization and aggressive antibiotic therapy with airway management are essential to prevent life-threatening complications. The main pathogens are Streptococcus viridans, Staphylococcus aureus, and anaerobes. A 65-year-old female presents with acute left abdominal pain and severe cough. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is rectus sheath hematoma. Rectus sheath hematoma is a collection of blood within the rectus abdominis muscle sheath. Rectus sheath hematoma can arise from diverse causes, including traumatic injury, spontaneous tears in blood vessels, or complications of anticoagulation therapy. Rectus sheath hematoma is often unilateral and exacerbated by straining or coughing. Management of rectus sheath hematoma range from observation for small cases to surgical intervention for larger or actively bleeding hematomas. A 70-year-old female presents with dyspnea and hypotension. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is pulmonary and right atrial thrombus. Risk factors of pulmonary embolism include recent surgery, prolonged immobilization, and deep vein thrombosis. The diagnostic test of choice for pulmonary embolism is CT pulmonary angiography. Prompt treatment with anticoagulants is crucial to prevent further complications. This obese teenage boy presented with left hip pain, limping and limitation in the range of motion after accidentally falling. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is classified as Salter-Harris type 1 fracture. The risk factors of slipped capital femoral epiphysis include obesity, teenager, male, and leg calf protus disease. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis can occur bilaterally in 20 to 40 percent of cases. Severe slips greater than 50 degrees need urgent surgery within 6 to 12 hours to prevent further damage and complications. Name the signs in video 1 and video 2. What is the most probable etiology? The sign demonstrated in video 1 is Chvostek's sign. Chvostek's sign is a clinical finding associated with hypocalcemia, elicited by tapping the facial nerve in front of the ear, just below the cheekbone. A positive Chvostek sign is indicated by a twitch of the facial muscles on the same side of the face as the tap. The sign demonstrated in video 2 is Trousseau's sign. Trousseau's sign is another clinical finding associated with hypocalcemia, elicited by inflating a blood pressure cuff above systolic pressure on the arm. A positive test is confirmed if the hand involuntarily contorts into a main diacuture pose, with wrist bent, thumb drawn in, and fingers arched. Additional symptoms of hypocalcemia include tingling in the lips, tongue, fingers, and feet, muscle aches laryngospasm, tetany, seizures, and arrhythmias. 
This patient suffered from knee deformity after trauma. What is the pitfall in the management of this condition? The diagnosis is knee dislocation. Keep in mind that, knee dislocation is about the vessels, not the bones. Popliteal artery can be injured in up to 40% of knee dislocations leading to distal ischemia and or compartment syndrome. Delayed neurovascular compromise is common, so admission for observation is the standard of care. Persistent ischemia for greater than 8 hours can result in an above-the-knee amputation. Many knee dislocations will spontaneously reduce and can have falsely reassuring exams. A palpable distal pulse is not adequate to rule out vascular injury, the ankle brachial index and a CT angiogram should be obtained if knee dislocation is suspected. This young female presents with prolonged body weight loss and abdominal fullness. Incidental CT findings are shown. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is omental cake. Omental cake refers to CT images showing abnormally thickened, greater omentum due to infiltration by other types of soft tissue, ascites, or chronic inflammation resulting in a cake-like appearance. The most common etiology of omental cake is ovarian cancer. Other causes include gastric cancer, colon cancer, pancreatitis, peritonitis, Crohn's disease, ascites, and tuberculosis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.